Today, we're going to be talking about having that spiritual relationship with the biblical Jesus. Imagine that. You're having coffee with Conrad. Conrad Rocks! Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Coffee with Conrad. This is Conrad from ConradRocks.net. Rocks of Revelation being poured out to you. My passion is for you to have a spiritual relationship with the biblical Jesus. You know, recently I've been trying to pay more attention to my to-do lists and my Google Calendar. And I've been trying to balance out everything. And uh, and reevaluating my priorities, trying to be efficient, you know, trying to be a good steward of my time, and try to get the mundane done and multitask, and you know, try to get a lot of things done at one time. And I have to examine: are my priorities God's priorities? So as I go about my to-do list, be mindful that I'm walking after the Spirit. You know, and I pray that if something comes available, even in the midst of me doing my mundane chores, that I'll be bold enough to follow through. You know, when I say multitask, I do things like wear Bluetooth headphones and listen to the Uversion Bible while I'm doing my chores. And I recommend that. You know, I've been extremely blown away recently about this Bible reading plan I'm doing. It's the Bible in 90 days and Susan, Susan and I do another plan every morning. We do one where we listen to the Bible in a year, first thing in the morning. And we listen to, you know, three or four or five chapters every day. And there's always something new, always something new that's been there the whole time. There's always something to meditate on throughout the day. And that's what's exciting about the Bible. So even though... I'm working on this other plan. I go straight through the Bible in 90 days. But the cool thing is, if I have two or three hours of chores, I can just knock out, you know, two or three days of my Uversion plan. And that's not because I have to. It's because I want to. You know, it's an awesome thing to actually engage with this spirit of truth that I'm always talking about, the spirit of truth that guides us into all truth. I saw this meme somewhere. The Bible, uh, when you read the Bible, the author is always present. And that's true. This may sound really scary to people that lean to their own understanding and their carnal mind. But if you follow the Spirit, uh, you'll see that the Spirit doesn't really violate the Bible. You know, it doesn't really go out of bounds. Because if it does, then it's not the Spirit of truth, right? Right? So that actually helps us discern the the true spirit from the, the false spirit. And I was thinking about Festus, how he said to the Apostle Paul, you know, much learning has made you mad in Acts 26, 24. Well, Paul may have been a smart person. You know, he may have been smart. He had tons of the Bible memorized. And... Um, I guess that seems crazy. Just that fact in itself makes you seem crazy. You know, they don't understand why Paul has this passion. You know, he's in chains for reading the Bible wrong. (laughs) They called him a heretic, right? Something happened to Paul with all of his grandiose theology uh, that was not agreeing with the other theologians. You know, Paul stopped leaning to the experts in the faith. He stopped leaning to even his own reasoning faculties. As we see in the book of Galatians, he conferred not with flesh and blood anymore. He felt like, hey, man, they're betraying the spirit of truth. You know, he says, uh, you know, I got it. The Lord taught me directly. And the knee-jerk reaction, when, when you hear somebody say that, like, oh, they're kooky. But, you know, the spirit 
this is kind of that this is kind of where God wants us to be. There's this whole new variable that completely changed Paul's life. It was the variable of the Holy Spirit. It was the variable of Jesus Christ being the Messiah upon the rock, that rock that Jesus is the Christ, all that revelation emanates from. And I used to think that that Christians were nuts, that they were crazy, very much like Festus thought. Paul was crazy. I would think it's nuts. You know, those crazy Christians are out on the streets ministering. There was something fueling them, though. And I, you know, you have to go, if you're leaning to your own understanding, the easy knee-jerk thing to say is, you know, well, they're just nuts. They're just nuts, right? But there was something fueling them. So in my backslidden days, you know, I was suppressing the spirit of truth and I was leaning to my carnal arguments in my carnal reasoning, which is at enmity with God. And that's the problem, see? When we rely on our carnal reasoning or eloquent arguments, we're actually ignoring the spirit of truth. We are suppressing the spirit of God to lean to our own understanding. This is something we have to do. We ha- If we, you know, I was backslidden, so I had to actually suppress the spirit of truth to ignore it intentionally, to continue in my carnal belief system. So we begin to lean to our own reasoning, we, we lean to our own understanding, and then we call the spirit unreasonable. We call faith unreasonable because we live by reason. Now I have a different perspective. Now I'm, I'm not saying that faith is not reasonable. You know, faith, faith is reasonable, In reverse, you know, faith is reasonable in hindsight. And here's what I mean. You know, we were listening to Isaiah 53 this morning, you know, the suffering servant passages. 2,000 years after Jesus was crucified, we can see that this suffering servant passage was something that clearly predicted the Messiah beforehand. However, if we were living in the days of John the Baptist, and we were trying to look at the scriptures and carnally predict the Messiah from that passage, we would have a very rough time doing so. Think about it. I mean, really think about that. And I've noticed that Jesus would expound or expand the scriptures from a, from a spiritual perspective to his friends, the disciples. And this had to be led by the Spirit. You know, think of this passage where the woman at the well, she's talking to Jesus in John 4, 24, 25. And he's saying this, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And then she says, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ, when he comes, he will tell us all things. In other words, you can't understand stuff unless Jesus explains it to you. She meant that the Messiah would make plain the scriptures so that they could understand them. Now, now today, this is the job of the Spirit of Truth. He guides us into all truth. You know, I, I find it interesting. We, we read Isaiah 53 today as our part of our plan, but I'm going to give you a couple of couple of inklings here to let you know that you couldn't predict. You know, I've said this before. If we were looking at this passage and it says Jesus, you know, the Messiah would be crucified between two thieves, you know, could we deduce that from it saying he was numbered with the transgressors? I mean, that's what it says. He was numbered with the transgressors in Isaiah 53, 12. Now, looking back, we can say that Oh, yeah, he was uh, crucified between two thieves, right? Or how could we predict Jesus as being the Messiah if he was going to be buried in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea? Because the scripture only says he made his grave with the wicked and in the rich in his death in Isaiah 53, 9. So, I mean, how, how could we know that he was going to be buried in Joseph of Arimathea's tomb, right? But looking back, we can see what it means. 
You need faith requires the spirit beforehand, and logic and reason can look at it after it's already happened. Now, here's one of the cool things about being a Christian is the spirit of truth will show us things to come. I'm going to read a few verses here, John 16, 13. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. Okay? That's pretty awesome. Now there's some more here that we need to chew on. He shall glorify me. See, so you're going to, the Spirit of Truth glorifies Jesus, right? That's one of our aspects of being a discerning Christian. Does this Spirit glorify Jesus? For he shall receive a mine and shall show it unto you all the things that the Father hath her mind. Therefore said I that he shall take a mine and show it unto you. So one of the ways that I've found about the Spirit of Truth showing us something to come is I don't really know that he did that until the event happens. I mean, I had a dream yesterday. It came to pass the very day I had the dream. But I didn't know that until it came to pass. You know, and that reminds me of the the Bible codes. Michael Drawson was an atheist, and he found that there were some codes in the Bible, and he tried to uh, warn Yitzchak Rabin of his assassination. And actually, that Bible code is on the cover of his book. And sure enough, uh, Yitzchak Rabin was assassinated. And then they found that there's codes in the Bible. The, the interesting thing is, looking back, once you find the codes, you can go, oh, there, there it is. It's been there this whole time. Now, I'm not really sure how much you subscribe to that, but that's just a caveat. You know, the Spirit of Truth shows us things to come. And then after they happen, we go, oh, Yeah, the Lord showed me that. So the idea is, even though I had the dream, I couldn't predict what was going to happen until, and then when it happened, I'm like, oh, that's how it came to place. You know, Joseph, you know, when he's interpreting the dream for the butler and the baker, he's saying that the Spirit of God interprets the dreams. Remember in Genesis 48, and they said unto him, We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me them, I pray you. So Joseph was in touch with the spiritual relationship with God before the old covenant, the old Mosaic covenant, was established. Look at the dream that Daniel had. Look at the dreams that Pharaoh had, an unbeliever. Look at the dream Nebuchadnezzar had, an unbeliever. And when they come to pass, we can see that those dream interpretations by men of God were sound and reasonable. It's kind of like saying faith is reasonable in reverse, or it's reasonable in hindsight. But knowing this, we should learn as Christians to see, knowing how the Spirit of God operates, we need to know how to take that precept or that concept and apply it to our daily lives so that we can move forward following the Spirit as Christians. And I'm going to tell you something. We are supposed to walk after the Spirit or we're not as children. Romans 8.14 For as many as are led by the Spirit of God... They are the sons of God. I'm going to say it again, Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now that will cook your carnal noodle, won't it? But because of this disparity or this problem at the flesh warring against the Spirit in the carnal mind being at enmity with God, I believe when we lean to the flesh we have a tendency to simply ignore everything spiritual because it's not reasonable, and we trust in our reasonable and carnal faculties to get us by. They've been serving us so well. 
God speaks to his people in dreams and visions. There's passages in the Bible where we're supposed to be watchful in prayer. And I've had some serious prayers in my life where I prayed it through. You've probably heard me talk a few times about praying it through. And this is a dialogue with the Creator. And it's very much like, you know, asking questions and getting visions and getting answers from the Lord. There's something that happens in the prayer. I'm not talking to a silent wall that's not listening, I'm talking to God. Think of David, the psalmist. You know, he would ask the Lord, am I supposed to go up? And the Lord would answer him. And a lot of people think that David, during these yes and no type answers, he was using the Urim and the Thummim uh, because there was a yes and no type answer. That's probably true. But even King Saul, he sought the Lord by visions, dreams, and prophets, and he eventually went to the, to the witch of Endor. 1 Samuel 28, 6, And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. Then said Saul unto his servants, Seek unto me a woman that hath a familiar spirit. Uh, then they went to the witch in Endor. So King Saul, if you remember, he even had the moments where he would prophesy, and they would say, Is, is not Saul among the prophets? But then the Spirit would leave. So this shows that the Spirit is very important in our lives, in our walk as a child of God. If the Spirit is absent or not saying anything, then we're in trouble. But however, in the New Testament, we always have access to the Spirit. Now, I know that Sometimes my podcast can get a little bit deep. You know, it's not really for milky type stuff. But I'm going to tell you, when when we're praying, we need to pay attention to those things that come up in our spirit. You know, we need to pay attention to the passages like in 1 Corinthians 14, 29, when somebody's prophesying, the other couple judge. They're probably comparing it to, hey, that doesn't fit with Scripture, or this does not bear witness with my spirit. You know, they're checking against the Word in the Spirit. And that's how we train up a child in the faith in the way that he should go. So when he's older, he will not depart from it. So we're supposed to know the voice of Jesus. Jesus even intimates that we may see his shape. You know, God says he will pour his spirit out on all flesh in Acts 2.17, not just the apostles and the prophets. He talks about the handmaidens. Uh, Let's read it, Acts 2.17. And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and young men shall have visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. So this is in the New Testament, and this is what Peter's saying, this is that. I mean, this is coming to pass. So one of the things that I want to share with you is we need to communicate with the Lord in, in dreams. You know, we need to pay attention to our dreams. I'm not certain that every dream is from God, of course. I'm not saying that. I believe even the devil can manip- manipulate dreams. You know, we also know that there's familiar spirits and demons. And I think that's one of the reasons a lot of us have a tendency to throw out everything supernatural because there's so much of the demonic in the supernatural. But as we become intimately familiar with the Word of God, we'll be able to discern the Spirit of God. We also, as we, you know, Hebrews 4.12, as we become familiar with the Word of God, we'll be able to discern the difference between a soulish revelation and the revelation from the Spirit, because the Word of God divides asunder the joints in the, in the marrow, the soul and the Spirit, I'm trying to remember that Scripture. But also, Hebrews 5.14, you know, as we exercise this spiritual relationship with the biblical Jesus, we're going to be able to discern good and evil. Hebrews 5.14 says, But strong meat belongeth to them that are full of age. Imagine those that were standing around prophesying in 1 Corinthians 14. They went from the milk to the meat. And the rest of the scripture is says, Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So we need to use it. So I'm going to encourage you to, to pay attention to your dreams. And, you know, especially when they come to pass, you're like, wait a minute. You know, what you're doing, when, when the Spirit of Truth shows you something to come and it's a dream that kind of came to pass, then you need to probably write it down and go, you know, I'm developing a relationship with the Spirit of Truth. 
Sometimes things that happen in my current life, you know, a, a vision that I had even decades ago will rush to my remembrance. And it's like the Lord saying, you know, I told you about this 20 years ago that this was going to happen. So I um, have comfort in going forward with my life that or at least I know what to expect. I know that I'm on course because God's bringing this to my remembrance. And when I say God is bringing something to our remembrance, I'm thinking of John 14, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said to you. You know, we need to honor that. You know, the the Spirit of Truth will teach us all things. He will show us things to come. He'll also bring to remembrance things that Jesus has told us. We also need mentors. Remember, Eli, the the high priest at that time, didn't really have a prophetic unction. Uh, But the prophet Samuel, before he was a prophet, he was hearing the voice of God and didn't know who it was. Remember, read 1 Samuel chapter 3. But Eli being worded up. See, that's why in 1 Corinthians 14, it says, you know, we need another couple to judge. Eli was worded up. And he's thinking, you know, this is what's going on, Samuel. You're hearing from God and say this. So Samuel even though you know he was destined to be a prophet, there was this point where he had to develop his relationship with God, his spiritual relationship with the biblical God. That was in the Old Testament dispensation, but the Spirit of God is poured out on all flesh now. All of us should be able to operate in the prophetic. And to be honest, I, I wouldn't even call that prophetic. You know, Jesus said his sheep shall know his voice. We need to walk after the Spirit to be his son. This is not something that we as the children of God should ignore. We should not ignore the spiritual aspect of our biblical Jesus. Brother Yoon, in his book, The Heavenly Man or Living Waters, I don't remember which one, but he said that his brothers and sisters in the Lord were so persecuted that they could not have an organized church meeting. They had to ask the Holy Spirit when and where To meet, this is the type of relationship that we as Christians should have with the Holy Spirit of God. That close. That's walking after the Spirit. But I guess all this started when I said, you know, I started out by saying I was trying to do my to-do list. God is needs to be Lord over our calendar. We don't fit God in. God is God. He's our. If He's our Lord, then we're concerned with what. He wants us to do. So following after the Spirit is probably going to mess up your plans. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? I mean, seriously. So I want to encourage you today. I'm always talking about having the spiritual relationship with the biblical Jesus. Let's take it to the next level. Let's really pay attention to what's going on in our prayer life. What is God showing us? Let's spend more time in prayer. What what? Let's wait upon the Lord and rise up uh, like eagles. Amen. God bless you. Thank you very much for being in my life. If this has touched you, please share this with your friends and family on social media. Till we meet again, dig deeper and go higher. Dig deeper, go higher at comradrocks.net.